ideas for the present, dreams for the future. Your imagination holds the key. Walt Disney once said, the era we live in is a dream come true. But there are still plenty of avenues to explore. The Disney Channel invites you to join us now and imagine. We've all heard voices, but have you ever seen one? Well, this is a printed version of the human voice. It's called a sonogram. And everybody's voice, it turns out, is just a little bit different. As Dr. Barbara Franklin, a speech pathologist, audiologist, and professor at San Francisco State University, can demonstrate. Well, we can certainly see that there are a lot of possibilities for all our voices to be different, but can you show us? Yes. I can actually demonstrate these differences using this sound spectrograph machine. Now, what is this? Well, you can speak into this machine through the microphone. Okay? The machine has a series of filters in it, and it takes the speech wave and changes it into an electrical wave. Our speech has frequencies ranging from about 100 to about 6,000 cycles per second. And if there's energy in any particular frequency area, this bulb back here will burn. And as the bulb burns, it leaves a trace on this piece of paper. Terrific. So we'll actually have a picture print of a voice. You actually, we call it a sonogram, but it's also been called a voice print. I would love to try this. Oh, sure. We'll, we'll try one, and we'll have you say the scheme of things. To find out how accurate the sonogram machine really is, I decided to challenge it by first recording my normal voice, then using a disguised voice. The scheme of things. The scheme of things. Okay, let's say the same thing and do what you want to try and fool the machine. The scheme of things. The scheme of things. Voice sonogram machines are used for a number of purposes. Speech therapists use them with deaf children when teaching them how to speak. By actually seeing a printed version of their voice, hearing impaired students can improve their speaking ability by altering their voice print so that it matches the print of someone who speaks normally. Scientists have used sonogram machines to record birds, frogs, and even the mighty whale. And all of those creatures, including us, produce individually unique prints. Okay, let's compare this spectrogram where you've tried to uh, disguise your voice to the other spectrograms. If you notice, if you had to match this to one of these three spectrograms. I'm afraid it would have to be this one. The, the thing that I notice is that the duration of these is the same. Mm -hmm. as, what else should we notice? Well, the basic pattern remains very much the same. If you notice the fact that you lowered your voice, your vocal cords were then opening and closing fewer times per second. So you notice these striations are further apart. You have changed your fundamental frequency. The problem is you change your fundamental frequency, but that in no way changes your voice print. So, okay, I couldn't fool the sonogram. But how far will this unique quality of our voices likely take us? Well, we'll find one answer here at Enrobot Incorporated. They make robots that take full advantage of the fact that we can't change our voices. As a matter of fact, they even talk back. Meet Topo. He's only three feet tall, but he can do some pretty amazing things. Topo, forward. Stop. Backwards. Stop. Forward right. Stop. Backwards. This robot and others like him are voice response wonders. They can be programmed with up to 50 commands and will only respond to their master's voice. Back left. Back left. Would you go and get me a Coke, please? Fetch. I asked Steve Whalen, who trains robots, how he gets these remarkable little fellows to work. I train the, uh, the module to accept a certain voice input from me and associate that with the command. So it like patterns my voice and then stores that information away and whenever it recognizes the pattern it outputs that information to the computer which then sends it to the robot and, and he does what you want him to. He does what I tell him. 
Using his headset and the proper computer program, Steve enters the command information which is stored on the disk. He then speaks the command words which the robot remembers and responds to when it hears them again. Right. Reset. Stop. Can we see Topo in action? Sure. Left. Stop. Forward. Back. Right. Stop. Back. Stop. Left. Responding to the uniqueness of your voice. Exactly. It's like a fingerprint. Oh, I've been looking for this guy. Uh, uh, I sent him on a little or something. Or yeah, I sent him on a little Erlen earlier. Uh, your uh, Dave. Yeah, right here I'll do. Stop. That's fine. Thanks a lot. Uh, you can go now. Uh, that'll be all for the time being. You want anything? Oh, well, you know, while you're out there, so I'll. Uh... But some pretzels. We've all heard of places where robots make products. Well, here's a place where we humans make robots. Just like cars on an assembly line, their components arrive, the motors are adjusted, their circuits tested, and the bodies put in place. And these voice response robots have tricks up their sleeves that even we humans don't always expect. Oh, hello. What's up? Follow me, Dave. Oh, well, excuse me. Okay. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Wonder where he's going. Is this some sort of game? Oh, I get it. Or do I?